just entered the theater of an alien sky. If the words and images seem strange to you, there's a reason for this. Our world was once a vastly different place. To experience this won't hurt you, and there is nothing to fear. No ancient story continues to attract greater fascination than the legend of Atlantis. That's a bit ironic, considering the absence of concrete historical evidence. In fact, on this particular subject, the early sources begin and end with the Greek philosopher Plato, whose musings on Atlantis were at best a third-hand report. To assert the terrestrial historicity of the story would violate the first principle of our investigations in these discourses. Never believe a local myth in the form it has come down to us. The historical fact is that no ancient myth has ever been substantiated by demonstrating a terrestrial location of its original subject. In the case of the Atlantis myth, what can be substantiated is the archetype, and that archetype reaches far beyond any local legend. That's how we know it has to have an explanation. No global archetype could possibly have arisen through a mere flight of local fancy. The archetype is the story of a far-famed city, island, kingdom, or continent in primeval times, either forgotten or subsequently destroyed by water or fire, or like Atlantis sinking into the abyss. It was said that the Athenian statesman Solon, traveling to the Egyptian city of Sais, had queried Egyptian priests as to their knowledge of antiquity. The answer given by the priest described the rise and fall of Atlantis, a primeval island said to have been greater in extent than Libya and Asia. The story recounted how that vast city had been caught up in a war between those who dwelt outside the pillars of Hercules and all who dwelt within them. It was said that the city of Athens was the leader on one side, with the kings of Atlantis leading the other. It seems that the account as given assigned the events to a suspiciously remote time some 9,000 years prior to Solon's conversation with the Egyptian priests. The story was that the Atlanteans had sought to exert control over the entire region, but as if to flatter Solon, the priestly account stated, And then Solon, your country shone forth in the excellence of her virtue and strength, and by their actions, the Athenians preserved from slavery those who were not yet subjugated and generously liberated all the rest of us who dwell within the pillars. Then came the catastrophic conclusion. Afterwards, there occurred violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of misfortune, all your warlike men in a body sank into the earth and the island of Atlantis, in like manner, disappeared in the depths of the sea. It's for good reason that Atlantis is called a fictional island. There's never been a persuasive argument for the mythic Atlantis anywhere on Earth, and yet the legend continues to enchant us. It would be impossible to count the number of proposed solutions to the Atlantis mystery, and the search for the lost kingdom has never ended just morphed into more imaginative ways to perpetuate the legend or to connect it to similar tales of other forgotten lands. Nevertheless, some who hear our interpretation may find it offensive that we do not consider the Atlantis tale to be any more credible than hundreds of other stories of forgotten cities, islands, or kingdoms, all of which apparently left no hard evidence to lend substance to the accounts. So what is missing here? The missing component is the entire subject of these discourses. The myth-making epoch did not arise by accident or mere flights of fancy. It was provoked by Earth's celestial environment, without which none of the global archetypes, not a single one, would be rationally conceivable. No archetype will ever be explained by occurrences on Earth. The original theater of world mythology was in the sky. 
And it was only through storytelling over many centuries that the mythic gods were progressively brought down to earth. Of course, every culture accumulated its own rites and symbols. By expressing the stories in their own language, the different cultures translated the mythic account into their story, their history. And that is how, region by region, the gods eventually became revered ancestors of those telling the stories, as hundreds of communities worldwide carried forward their own mythic interpretations, their own claimed lineages, each setting themselves in competition with the multitude of divine lineages preserved by other nations. We could, of course, follow the threads from Plato's notes on Atlantis through hundreds of derivative speculations seeking to find Atlantis on Earth, but such an adventure would be as futile as any baseless escapade ever undertaken. In fact, the Atlantis myth can only emphasize the essential requirement of comparative study. Such a study is called for wherever localized variations on a mythic image can be viewed through the context of a larger, well-substantiated archetype. Of course, the Atlantis tale itself is not an archetype. It is simply a popular variation on one archetype in particular, the myth of the celestial city or kingdom. That this archetype was endlessly localized on Earth is precisely why it's so futile to isolate a particular localization, in this case Atlantis, as if it rises above hundreds of other traditions of the lost city or kingdom. One could just as well spend a lifetime seeking to locate El Dorado's gold, or Shangri-La, or Brendan's Isle, or the Fountain of Youth, not to mention hundreds of other lost lands competing for the same distinction. And of course, many explorers the world over have devoted the better part of their lives to such adventures, achieving notoriety only through the profound failure of their search. From the beginning of these discourses, we've emphasized that the essential requirement is a comparative study to follow the archetypes back to their first expressions, since those will be the closest in time to the original experience. In this case, the archetype is the memory of a cosmic habitation and what happened to it. One story preserved in hundreds of localized variations. And so it seems that the search for Atlantis never ended, just morphed into more creative ways to perpetuate a legend. In our own time, the fascination stirred by the Atlantis myth ran so far ahead of known facts that one could reasonably ask if a useful interpretation is even conceivable. Well, yes, a useful interpretation is not just conceivable, but available to us, and it only requires us to consider the celestial events that inspired all of world mythology and all of sacred symbolism, from utopian dreams to their doomsday conclusions.